Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today we'll be installing Debian Linux or Debian GNU Linux, how it's called. If you would like to try out this operating system, then you're in the right place. I'll show you how you can get it downloaded, how you can get it flashed on the USB drive, and then also how to install it on your computer. We'll be installing it on the laptop. So yeah, this will be pretty simple. I'll try to explain the steps that we're going through. And before we start, if you're new to the channel, please take a second to subscribe, click the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. And also, if you will find this video helpful, interesting, please give it a like. And if you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section below. All right, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the step number one, we need to download the distribution. For that, you just gotta go to any browser and then type in debian.org, press enter. It's gonna take you to the main website where you can download this Debian distribution. As you can see, it shows you the community. It shows you the download. You just gotta click on more. Over here, you can choose on the right side, download, where to get Debian. On the download page, you can choose to do a small installation image for the 64-bit PC installation or for the 32. Since it's a small netbook that we're gonna be installing it on, I'm gonna download the 32-bit. But if you install it on a newer PC, you probably should go with the 64-bit. You can also use 32-bit on the 64-bit computer, but you cannot use the 64-bit on a 32-bit computer. In my case, I will go with the 32-bit for the small netbook. You can also choose to download a larger complete installation image, which will contain more packages, making it easier to install machines without the internet connections. But since I have an internet connection, I don't need to download a larger package i will just download whatever i need during the installation process once the download is complete we need to go ahead and open up the flash program i'm using balena etcher this is the most popular program for flashing iso files onto the usb drives for linux distributions you got to choose flash from file then go to the downloads and click on the distribution that we have just downloaded as you can see it says here debian 11.3.0 click open then you go to the select target you gotta choose that usb stick that you're gonna be using i'm using the jet flash transcend 16 gigabyte this is more than enough then it's gonna start flashing this iso file on the usb drive after it's complete we're gonna be able to use it to start the installation on the netbook since it's a very small image it's only a little bit more than 400 megabyte it doesn't take very long to flash, so it will take only a few minutes to complete. Meanwhile, it's flashing. I'm going to give you a few interesting facts about this operating system. Debian is one of the oldest operating systems based on Linux kernel. The initial release was in September of 1993, so more than 29 years ago. The cool fact that the Debian distribution code names are based on the names of the characters from the Toy Story films. Once flashing is done, it's going to validate the image, make sure everything is flashed on the USB drive properly and there is no mistakes, no, no errors. After it's complete, you can go ahead and close the program, remove the USB stick, and then we're going to start the installation process. All right, there we go. So this is our small netbook that we're going to be installing Debian Linux on today. First of all, I want to make sure that in the BIOS, in the boot priority settings, the removable media is in the first place because otherwise it may not start loading from the USB stick and then the installation won't start. So first of all, go to the BIOS, then go to the boot bookmark, go to the boot device priority, then make sure that first boot device is a removable device. Then go to the hard disk drives and make sure that the USB jet transcend is in the first drive place. And then press F10 to save all these settings, press OK. Now it's gonna reboot the netbook. It's gonna start automatically with this menu here so we can choose from a few different options we can choose a graphical install we can use a regular install there's also advanced options i will choose the graphical install because it will be more easy to understand and it's going to be more visual unless you're a professional user you need to choose a graphical install if you're a professional user you're probably not going to watch this video because this video is meant for those who install it for the first time so it gives you a good choice of different languages to install uh, I will choose English, then press continue. Then you gotta choose your location. The location is used to set your time zone. 
Then you can configure the keyboard and press continue. Then it will start loading installer components from the installation media. It's going to load additional components. So you just got to wait until it's finished. And depending how powerful your machine is, it could take a different amount of time. Unfortunately, most Wi-Fi adapter drivers are proprietary, which means they're not included with Linux distros. And this could be a real problem because you have to download them from third party sources. And sometimes it's hard to find them. As you can see on this netbook, I have the same problem. It's missing the firmware. It says some of your hardware needs non-free firmware files to operate. The firmware can be loaded from removable media, which I don't have at the moment. So I'm just going to choose no. And we're going to deal with that later. If you do have the drivers available already, for example, like it's missing this file RT2860. I'm pretty sure this is for the Wi-Fi adapter. If you do have it, then you can just plug in that USB and locate the file. There we go. As you can see, it says the system has multiple network interfaces. So we need to choose either it's going to be connected via the Ethernet cable or through Wi-Fi because my Wi-Fi adapter is not set up because I don't have the proper drivers yet. I'm just going to use the Ethernet cable because otherwise I'm not going to have internet connection. And since I have downloaded not a full version, then I need the internet access to download additional drivers. So let's go ahead and choose the Ethernet connection and press continue. The good thing is the regular Ethernet adapters, they don't have those proprietary drivers and they work fine. So in case you have problems with your Wi-Fi, try the actual Ethernet cable. Then you just need to enter the host name for this system, which is the single word that identifies your system to the network. Then you can also configure the network. We're just going to skip it. Then you need to set up the root password. This is going to be the password for the system administrator account, and you will need it to actually do the installation. So make sure you remember this password. It also gives you a few suggestions which password you can use. It contains a mixture of letters, numbers, and punctuations. So it depends how strong the password you want to set up. You can set it up pretty simple, or you can set it up more difficult password. There is also a good note there that it says that the root user should have not an empty password. If you leave this empty, the root account will be disabled and the system's initial user account will be given the power to become root using the sudo command. So make sure you set up the root password. Then we need to set up the user account name. So type in the full name for the account user. I'm just going to type Acer EEPC, then press continue. Then you can select a username for a new account. I'm just going to type in Acer EEPC. And then you can also create the password. And this is going to be a different password. This is a password that lets you log in into the account. This is not the root password. It is different. You can make it the same password. But if you want to increase security, I would suggest you use two different passwords. This will make your account even safer. Then you need to configure the clock. You got to choose your time zone and press continue. It's going to start loading additional components. Here it gives you a few options how to install Debian Linux on your computer on the disk. We will choose guided using Fire Disk and press continue. Then you need to choose which disk you have. If you have multiple disks, you got to choose the proper disk. I have only one disk, so I'm just going to choose this 128 gigabyte SSD drive. Then in the next step, just choose all files in one partition. This is recommended for new users and press continue. Then you just got to choose finish partition and write changes to the disk and press continue. Then on the next step, it will give you the warning that this will destroy all data on any partitions you have removed, as well as on the partition that are going to be formatted. So make sure that the partition that you have chosen, there is no important data saved there, no important information because it will all be removed. It, the drive will be completely formatted and you will lose all the information. So I highly recommend double check and make sure that that disk is completely empty. There is nothing saved on that disk that might be of any value to you. Make sure to copy everything that you need. If you're sure that it's ready to go, then choose yes, where it says write the changes to the disk and press continue. It will start formatting the partitions. So basically removing everything from that partition and reformatting it. It will start installing the base system. And this process could take anywhere from a few minutes to maybe like half an hour, depending how fast your computer is. 
For example, this netbook is very, very slow. It's more than 12 years old. It actually took me about half an hour to get the installation done completely. If you install it on a newer computer, it probably won't take that long. It may take like 10 minutes, maybe even less. But anyway, it's, it's pretty simple and it's all done automatically. You don't have to do anything else and just wait until the installation will be complete. And then we're gonna continue to the next step. Then to configure the package manager, you need to choose a mirror from where you're gonna be downloading additional files for this operating system. So first you just gotta choose the country, then press continue. Then you're just gonna find the mirror archive. I'm just gonna go with the deb.debian.org. If you have downloaded the full installation package, you're probably not gonna need to go through this process. We don't need the proxy also, so just press continue. It's gonna start configuring the package manager and downloading additional files as needed. So in some cases, it might be good to just download the full package and then you're not gonna need to connect to the internet and everything will be just working offline, which could be a pretty good option. All right, there we go. So the core of the system is installed. Now we need to choose additional components, collections of software. As you can see, there are a few different versions. I'm not gonna install them all, but you can try one or the other. It depends which one you like. They're all gonna have different user interfaces. Basically, you're gonna need only one collection of software. You don't need to choose multiple. You just choose which one you like. I will just choose Cinnamon and press continue. All right, finally, half an hour later, I think even more, the installation is almost done. Then it's gonna start installing GRUB bootloader. And this is the bootloader that you see in the beginning when you press power on the computer. It will allow you to choose the proper operating system. Since it's the only operating system on this computer, it is safe to install the GRUB bootloader to the primary drive. So I'm just gonna choose yes and press continue. Then you need to choose the drive where to install it. So it's gonna be the 128 gigabyte SSD drive. You just gotta click on it and press continue. All right, so the few final steps and it's gonna be complete. It's finished in the installation. All right, so the installation is complete. Now it's time to reboot your computer and boot into the new system. Make sure to remove the installation media, the USB drive that we have the installation media on so that we can boot into the new system rather than restarting the installation. If you forget to remove it, it's gonna start the process all over again, which we don't want, so make sure to remove the USB stick and then press continue. There we go. So here's our GRUB. As you can see, we have Debian GNU Linux. Just press enter. It's gonna start loading. It's gonna do all different types of checks. Once all the checks are complete, it's going to take you to the welcome screen. You just need to press on your account and enter the password. Press enter. All right, there we go. Let's have a quick look at this user interface. As you can see, it looks pretty cool. You got a taskbar on the top. Unlike in Windows, it's on the bottom. In the upper right corner, you got your battery, your speaker, your brightness. It shows you the wired connection. It gives you settings as well as the power button. There's also a calendar and time. If you go to the activities, there is Mozilla Firefox browser pre-installed. Then you have other programs as well. Evolution, Rhythmbox, LibreOffice, Files, Software, Help. Let's have a look at Files. See how it looks. See, my computer is a bit slow. It might work faster on yours. So as you can see, it is pretty good. Like it shows you the desktop, documents, downloads, music, pictures, public templates, videos. So pretty straightforward. Let's close it. Let's open up the software and see what we got pre-installed on this version. All right, there we go. So let's go. As you can see, Debian doesn't have much pre-installed. You need to basically install everything you need. So this could be good if you don't wanna have a whole bunch of different programs already pre-installed and you wanna just pick whatever you need. Let's try the Firefox browser, see how it works. And yes, because it's a very slow machine, it does take very long to load. If I would have installed it on a faster machine, it probably works way, way faster.
So there you go. As you can see, the Firefox browser works fine. So you can use the internet browser. So overall, I do like the way it looks and it is pretty minimalistic like many other Linux distros. There you have it, guys. I hope you find this video helpful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. Take a second to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss new videos. I appreciate it very much. If you have any comments or suggestions what next Linux video you want me to make, drop them down in the comment section below. I'll try to make it as soon as I can. But this is it for now. I hope you have a nice day. See you soon. Bye-bye.